Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Tornadoes, hurricanes, snowstorms. What makes weather happen? That's what this program is all about. If you're ready, let's go. What is weather? Weather, it happens every day all over the world. And weather can really affect our lives. For example, a snowstorm can force schools to close and cause treacherous driving conditions. Hurricanes can cause property damage and be dangerous to all living things. A blistering heat wave or a lack of rain can ruin crops and cause health problems too. We see weather, we hear about it, and we talk about it. But what is weather? Simply put, weather is what is happening in the air around us at any one time. Scientists who study the weather are called meteorologists. Meteorologists try to predict or forecast what the weather will be, using computers, radar, and weather satellites to keep track of the weather they are able to forecast fairly accurately changes in the weather. Before technology, people looked to nature for clues about what the weather would be. For example, seeing birds flying south meant that cold weather was on the way. When people saw bees busy at work, that was a sign of nice weather. People also believed that if they saw a cow lie down, it meant that rain was on its way and a bright red sky at night meant that there was nice weather on the way. What makes weather? Today, meteorologists use high-tech equipment to keep track of changes in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is all the air that surrounds the Earth. The atmosphere is made up of five layers of gases that surround the Earth. The layer closest to the Earth is called the troposphere. The next layer up is called the stratosphere. Then the mesosphere. The thermosphere. And the top layer is called the exosphere. Weather happens only in the layer closest to the Earth, the troposphere. There are three different things that are needed to make weather. They are air, water, and heat. To understand how weather works, we need to talk about wind, currents, and air density. Density is the comparison of how heavy something is to the space that it occupies. For example, when air is cold, the air molecules are very close together. When the air begins to warm, the air molecules move faster and move apart from each other. Cold air has more molecules in the same space than warm air. Therefore, cold air is heavier and more dense than warm air. Warm air is lighter and less dense. That's why cold air sinks and warm air rises. Air begins to move when the sun heats the land and warms the air above. Warmer air pushes upward because it is less dense. At the same time, heavier cooler air is drawn in below to replace the warmer rising air. Air that moves up and down is called an air current. Air that moves on the same level is called wind. How fast or how slow the air moves is determined by air pressure. Air pressure is how much weight the air is pressing down on Earth. When cool, dense air presses down on the Earth, the air pressure is usually high. High pressure usually brings nice weather. When warm air rises away from the Earth, the air pressure is usually low. Low pressure usually brings clouds and rain. Changing pressure brings winds. Wind blows from areas of high pressure to low pressure. If there isn't a big difference in the pressure, 
we get gentle winds. If there's a big difference in the air pressure, winds can become violent. Measuring weather. It is very important for meteorologists to be able to measure how hot or cold the air is and what the air pressure is. They can do both with weather instruments. To measure how hot or cold the air is, meteorologists use a thermometer. A thermometer tells the temperature of the air. To measure air pressure, meteorologists use a barometer. It is important for meteorologists to be able to measure the amount of water or humidity in the air, and they do that with a weather instrument called a hygrometer. Besides temperature and air pressure, water also plays a very important part in weather, and there certainly is a lot of water on Earth. If you were to look at the Earth from space, you'd soon realize that over 70% of the Earth is covered by water. All over the world, water is constantly moving up into the sky through the process of evaporation. Evaporation is the process of liquid water changing to gas, or water vapor. Water vapor is a clear gas and is impossible to see. An example of evaporation in the real world is when a puddle dries up after a rainstorm. Here is what happens. The water molecules in the puddle gain energy from the sun, air, or ground, and gradually escape into the atmosphere as water vapor. When up in the sky, the water vapor cools and changes back into a liquid in a process known as condensation. We can demonstrate that by using a metal pie plate filled with ice. The water vapor cools when it hits the metal and changes back to a liquid. This never-ending cycle of evaporation and condensation is known as the water cycle. It's the sun's heat that makes liquid water on Earth evaporate and mix with the air. Great amounts of water from Earth's oceans, rivers, and lakes are always evaporating. As the water vapor rises in the air, it cools. Then the water vapor condenses back to liquid water. Clouds. Clouds play a very important part in weather. Did you ever wonder how clouds formed? Well, during the water cycle, when the water vapor condenses on particles of dust, it forms very tiny droplets of water, or ice. These tiny drops make up clouds. Clouds are masses of water droplets. There are many different kinds of clouds. Cirrus clouds are thin white clouds that have fuzzy edges that look like feathers. Cirrus clouds are made of ice. The large puffy clouds you see in the sky are called cumulus clouds. You can see puffy white cumulus clouds when the weather's nice. But cumulus clouds can change and become dark gray. Dark gray cumulus clouds can bring rain showers. There are other kinds of clouds that cover the whole sky. They're called stratus clouds. Stratus clouds may bring rain or snow. When stratus clouds move close to the ground, we call them by another name, fog. When water falls from the clouds, we call that precipitation. Precipitation is when water condenses into droplets and then falls from the clouds. Water can fall in many different forms depending on the temperature. Temperature determines if water will fall as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Powerful weather. Did you ever wonder how violent storms like tornadoes, hurricanes, or thunderstorms happen? Well, Thunderstorms occur when hot, moist air rises fast and cools quickly. 
dark clouds form, and big drops of rain or hail fall. Lightning occurs when ice crystals in the clouds rub against each other, giving them an electrical charge. Lightning heats up the air and expands rapidly to make the sound we call thunder. Thunder and lightning happen at the same time. We see lightning first because light travels faster than sound. Did you know there are about 2,000 thunderstorms happening around the world at any one time? And that lightning strikes the earth as often as 100 times a second? Let's take a look at one of the most violent storms on earth, tornadoes. Tornadoes happen over land when there's a huge difference in the air pressure, and cold air tries to squeeze under the warm air. This creates a violent battle. Tornadoes are spinning tunnels of clouds that have the power to suck up everything in their way. Hurricanes, unlike tornadoes, begin as small thunderstorms over warm water. Hurricanes form when warm, moist air rises. From space, you can notice that the air begins to swirl around because of the Earth's spin. As it swirls over the ocean, it soaks up more and more water vapor. The result is a hurricane. Hurricanes consist of heavy rains and very high wind speeds that can cause violent ocean waves and lots of damage to land areas. Hurricanes are much larger than tornadoes and can measure up to 300 miles wide. Fortunately, as hurricanes pass over land, they die out. What is climate? In studying the weather, scientists realize that there are certain patterns of weather in different parts of the world. They discovered that weather in one area of the world is similar from one year to the next. These weather conditions are called climates. Climate is the typical long-range weather pattern in different regions of the world. There are three different climate zones in the world. The climate of a place depends mostly on how far away it is from the equator. The equator is an imaginary line that runs around the center of the Earth. At the equator, the sun's rays hit the Earth directly. This makes areas around the equator very hot. The climate near the equator is called the tropical zone. At the southernmost part of the Earth and the northernmost part of the Earth are the North and South Poles. The sun's rays are more spread out, so the ground cannot warm up quickly. Both these areas of the Earth are always cold, and they're called the polar zones. Between the equator and the poles, there's another climate zone we call temperate. Temperate climates have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Seasons happen because the Earth tilts as it goes around the sun. As the Earth moves, some places on Earth are tipped closer to the sun. That makes it warm season. Places further from the sun make it a cold season. That's why it's winter in the northern temperate zone when it's summer in the southern temperate zone. Polar climates have only two seasons. They have six months of summer followed by six months of winter. In the tropical climates, the tilt of the earth doesn't affect the weather too much. It feels warm all year long. But tropical climates do have two seasons, either wet or dry. And tropical seasons are determined by wind direction. In the summer, the winds blow off the oceans, bringing lots of rain. In the winter, they blow off dry land, causing a hot, dry season. Well, there you have it. Weather, it affects everything on our planet. And now you know just how weather works in the real world.